Okay, and I wanted to draw you a picture for this because pictures are very cool. So we can draw a graph of this relation. The way you draw graphs is you draw a point for every point in S. So I would put 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 16, and 18. And then I'll draw arrows where there's points. So if something divides something else, I'm going to draw an arrow from the small one to the big one. So 2 divides itself. Everything divides itself. So I can draw little reflexive arrows here. And 2 definitely divides 8. And it divides 16. And it divides 18. It also divides 6. 3 divides 6. 6 divides 18, 3 divides 18, let's see, did I miss anything? What? 8 divides 16. 8 divides 16. I think that was the last one. Okay, so here's a diagram that represents the factor relationship among these points, or the divides relationship. So when you see an arrow, you read the first one divides the second one. So this is a nice diagram, but it doesn't show me that relationship, like kind of like less, which ones are come before the other ones. Like I have to actually follow the arrows to see it. But when I have a partially ordered set, I can redraw this diagram in a way that lets me see the relationships without having to follow the arrows, which is very cool. And that's called making a Hasse diagram. So before I make one, Can you see by looking at this that you might actually want to draw it in a different way so you could see stuff without following the arrows? Okay, so what would you do if you wanted to make a diagram like that? You know three things. You know it's reflexive. You know it's anti-symmetric, and you know it's transitive. So one thing we could do is get rid of these little, stupid little loops. We could just say, hey, we know it's reflexive, and just write that on the side and get rid of all those. Another thing we could do is we say we know it's transitive, so if 2 divides 8 and 8 divides 16, I don't have to draw an arrow from 2 to 16, right? So I could get rid of the transitive edges. And then the other thing I could do to make it easier to read is to make it so all arrows go up in the diagram. And then I wouldn't have to draw any arrows at all, and then I could really, really see without thinking too much what the relationships were. Okay, so let's try that. So if I want to put things on the bottom, so I'm just going to ignore all the little loops first. If I want to redraw this, let's make this ooh, wrong way. Make that small, as small as it can be. If I want to redraw this, which things, if I want to put things that don't have arrows going into them at the bottom, which ones go at the bottom? Two goes on the bottom. And three and five. So all of those go on the bottom. And then the next level is just stuff that has errors from these, but nothing else. Because if I put 16 on the next level, I actually have to put 8 in between those two. Right? So I actually just follow one arrow from 2 and get 8. That goes on the next level. And 6 also goes on the next level. And there's a line from 2 to 8 and 2 to 6, but 3 also goes to 6. And this arrow already, 8 goes there, 18 goes there, but 2 already goes to 6, so 18 actually has to go on the next level, and 16 has to go on the next level. And that's it. So we have no, none of those loops anymore. We don't need any more arrows, and we can actually tell the relations without any confusion anymore. Right, so this is called a Hasse diagram. So in this diagram, we, t we said that this was a partially ordered set. So we know that.
We know that it's reflexive, anti-symmetric, and it's transitive. And that's why we could draw it this way, because we made those assumptions, that it's reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. So without drawing it, we know that 2 is actually a, divides itself, and 3 divides itself, and 5 divides itself, because it's a Hasse diagram for a partially ordered set. And remember that we said partially ordered set is like that because we can actually sort of think of less than. So in this diagram, what are the minimal elements? Two, three, Two, three and five are minimal because they have nothing beneath them. So I'm going to put squares around the minimal elements. Okay, what are the maximal elements? 16, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, you're at a maximal point even if it's not the tallest peak. So this is a teeny weeny little mountain here, but it's still a maximal place. I can't go any higher. So maximal is the circled one. So we have three maximal elements and we have three minimal elements. And one of them happens to be both. Okay, do we have like a maximum? Like just one maximal element? No, we have three. So if you have just one maximal element, then it's a maximum. And if you have just one minimal element, it's a minimum. So a fully ordered set has a maximum, and it ha or it actually has a minimum, and it has a maximum too. So if there's a full, actually a full order should have a minimum and doesn't have to have a maximum. So if one was in there, it would be a minimum. If one was in here, it would be a minimum because one would be on the lowest level and it would be connected to these. Wait, did you just say if there's only one element, it doesn't have to have a maximum, just a minimum? Yeah, ignore what I just said about it. You can actually have a full order without having a maximum or minimum because the integers with less than or equal to <coughs> is a fully ordered set and there's absolutely no minimum or maximum because the minimum would be negative infinity and the maximum would be positive infinity and there's no such thing. So. It's still fully ordered, though. This is a partial order. And so a minimum is equal to a singular or a single minimal element. And a maximum is if we have a single maximal element. And otherwise, we don't have one. So if there's more than one, that means there isn't a maximum or a minimum. And the way I remember those is the, the ending AL, that's an adjective. It describes something, right? So you can have lots of things that have that ending, but minimum and maximum are single things. They're nouns. A minimum is one thing. You can only have one of them. And a maximum is one thing. You can only have one of them. 